Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. We call our Tuesday times together our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Tract and Truth, we are in a study on our other days as we walk through the book of Second Peter, but on our Tuesday broadcast, we readily set aside our Bible study time to really focus on telling the gospel, using gospel tracts, just trying to sharpen each other in this whole business of being Christ's representative, speaking for Christ the gospel, giving the gospel out to lost people that we meet. And to that end, we want to dedicate this day. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of Luke to chapter 8. If you can, turn in your Bible to a rather familiar parable that's there, Luke and chapter 8. I've got one of our gospel tracts in my hand. This is our newest one. It's entitled, Do You Know For Sure? I'll tell you about this one here in just a moment and be encouraging you to get a gospel track from us. But I have a letter from an inmate in front of me. His name is not Mark. I'll just use my own. He's an inmate in the state of Wisconsin, and he sent us a gift. Now, he was able to do that due to an inheritance that he got, but he wrote this to me, and he said, I'm an inmate here in Wisconsin, and because of an inheritance that the Lord has blessed me with, I'm able to send some money to some ministries. Because of my wicked past, he says, I that led me to conviction in court, I don't deserve mercy, but God has shown me amazing grace here in prison. Also keep in prayer, and he mentions another prisoner here. He says, this other prisoner needs salvation. We were cellmates in another prison about nine years ago. That's where I got right with the Lord. I still have 16 more years to finish out of my 25-year sentence, but God has been so good to me. My former friend, his former cellmate, has already completed his court sentence time and is free now. He wrote me in last May, asked me if I still was following the Lord. Well, of course I am. He thanked me also for the chapel Bible that I had given to him and the verses that I had underlined there, as well as presenting the gospel to him so many times. My friend is still not saved. Please, would you pray for him? And he asks us to send some gospel tracts to him. This man, again, I'm using my own name because I don't have permission to use his. This man, this prisoner I'm calling Mark, is being a faithful man of God in his location, telling the gospel, using our gospel tracts. Oh, friend, you and I are not in prison. I'm not. More than likely, you're not. I do know we have some prisoners that listen to our broadcast, but those of us that are not in prison have so many people with whom we run into and can give them the gospel. Gospel tracts are a great format for that. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand, as I said a moment ago, is entitled, Do You Know For Sure? And what you need to know for sure is where you're going to spend eternity. This is a small booklet format of a gospel tract. By small, I mean that it's four inches wide and two and three quarters inches tall. It's a little booklet format. It's designed to share the gospel with people that have grown up in a religious group Primarily, this gospel track was written with people that are Mormons in mind because so many Mormons think they're going to heaven, but they have a wrong gospel. They have a 
inaccurate Jesus, and they need the clarity of truth. But this gospel tract does not mention the word Mormon. It does talk about Jesus being the only high priest after the order of Melchizedek, and it talks about why Christ died. It talks about the need for people, even religious people, to know Christ as Savior. It's a great gospel tool. Would you let me send it to you, please? At the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to me your name and your mailing address. Do that, and we'll send you a complete sample packet of our gospel tracts, including this little booklet one, Do You Know For Sure? Let you and I plan to be giving the gospel to somebody today. The verses in front of me here out of the book of Luke, chapter 8, beginning at verse 4, says this, And when much people were gathered together and were come to him, to Jesus, out of every city, he spake by parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell among a rock. And as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And he goes on to explain that this parable is about telling and giving out the gospel. Let's talk today about giving up the gospel and particularly some excuses that people give as to why they don't use gospel tracts as an evangelism tool. My goal today is to debunk a couple of the excuses that I hear regularly. For instance, here's an excuse I hear. People say, I don't use tracts because, well, they're simply a wasted and discarded tool. I see them laying around. I see them in trash cans. They're a waste of time and they're a waste of money. A moment ago, I read there from the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. That's the parable there of the sower and the seed. You probably know that parable very, very well. But notice in the story that Jesus' own words are telling us to see how good seed had been cast out by a faithful farmer, but in the parable, 75% of that seed fell in places that ended up producing no crop. Is this a parable given to discourage farmers from sowing seed? Is it you being used by Jesus to discourage people from sowing the gospel seed of the word of God out? Hardly at, at all. Rather, it was given to simply explain how the gospel seed works and why some ends up seemingly not producing anything at all. But does it really? I have a couple of gospel stories here. Here's one. A man wrote to us and he said that he had found a track that had obviously ended up wasted. This man was from New Jersey. He said, and I'm right reading now, while walking to work one morning, I picked up a wet, dirty track from the sidewalk. As I read it, he said, I thought of 10 people I know who I would really like to give a copy of this track to. Would you please send me some extra copies? Well, friend, that discarded, trashy track, according to some people, and up going to go to 10 people, what looked like one that got discarded end up being a tremendous impetus to see 10 people receive the gospel. Here's another one. A guy wrote to us and he said, I found part of of one of your tracks on the ground, but it was missing its title. But there was enough left to show me my condition as a sinner, my Savior Jesus, and where I could go to get more literature like this. So I'm asking you for samples of your literature, as I would love to read the missing parts of the track. Here's a man, found the track, came to Christ, discovered he's a sinner, discovered Jesus as Savior. The rest of his letter says he received Christ, and now he, from this discarded, torn God, gospel track not only gets to know Christ as Savior, but he's going to be using our track to see more people get the gospel. Well, that's one reason, excuse, why people don't use the gospel. Here's another excuse I hear often, that tracks offend people. If I give a track, somebody's going to get offended. Well, is that true? Do gospel tracks end up offending lost people? The answer is, of course they do. 
friend, you tell somebody they're a sinner on their way to hell, how could that not offend a lot of people? The book of Galatians in chapter 5 tells us that the cross and the gospel is offensive to lost people. If our concern, though, is offending somebody, then we better be careful in sharing the gospel. Let's not be overly offensive when we share the gospel, but Christ told us to go and give the gospel. As he preached, he offended people. If our concern is offending somebody, then we dare not ever share the gospel. But Christ, as I said, told us to go and share the gospel with every person in the world. Now, obviously, we want to be careful. We want to be kind when we tell the gospel to people. We don't want to overly be offensive as we witness and be abrasive. A few months ago, I received a phone call from a man out west. He is a waiter. Somebody left one of our tracks in the restaurant as a tip, and it's a a track that gets to rate the waiter's service. Well, the person, the man who had waited on uh, the people that left the track got offended because the track rated his service. But he went into the back cooking area, and a fellow waiter who is a believer heard his story about how he got offended by the track, and the believer took up the offense of this non-saved waiter here, and he also became offended, and he called our office. Well, I listened to the man's, the believing man's phone call as he complained about how the track offended his friend. When he got done, I finally asked, his name was Tony, he said, Tony, have you ever told the gospel to your waiter friend that received the track? Sadly, you could hear his voice drop. He said, no, I have not. I said, Tony, that track offended your sinner friend who's a waiter. But you have offended God because you've never told your friend the gospel. I said, Tony, which is the greater offense? If your friend never gets saved and goes into the lake of fire, will he wish that you had stopped and offended him by telling him the gospel? Oh, beloved, we, I often say that you and I cannot stop people from going into hell. But what we can do is stop them from going there empty-handed We can put a track in their hand, give them the gospel, do it lovingly, but let's do it. Does the gospel offend? Yes, it does. Jesus said that it would. Will some gospel tracks end up as trash? Yes, they will. Will some be thrown away, torn up, ripped up, and just create turmoil in the heart of people that never received the gospel? Yes, it's going to do that. But some, as Jesus said, like a farmer's seed, is going to be sown in hearts that are good ground, ready, because God has prepared them for the gospel. God has been at work in their lives already. Friend, you and I are going to either offend God by not telling the gospel or offend sinners with the gospel. When I stand before the Lord someday, when you and I stand before the Lord someday, let's stand there having offended sinners by trying to give them in love and grace and mercy the gospel rather than offend our Savior for never telling others the gospel that he died, was buried, and rose again to offer through his own life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.